Hello, biology students. We're going to go even more in depth into genetic engineering and biotechnology today, talking about how it might be slightly controversial and is it ethical. So before we talk about how moral and is it right, we have to learn about some uses of this genetic engineering. Sometimes through genetic engineering and making transgenic organisms, a lot of what is in the news is genetically modified foods. Let's discuss some of the risks and some of the benefits, and you can make your own opinion. So the risks of making genetically modified foods often include the following, which you should jot down. Sometimes we might accidentally, as we add different genes into the different types of foods, we might be introducing allergens or toxins. So even though we might want to make an apple super juicy and big, maybe something bad might happen. We might accidentally have that juicy bigger apple, might accidentally make apple babies with the natural apples in the environment. This would be bad because then we are not keeping the genetically modified ones contained. We might accidentally, as we make things, we might create antibiotic resistance. Often this is thought to be regarding animals that we're making transgenic by giving them too many different genes that might make them antibiotic resistant. We might accidentally make the crop, such as the apple or the cow, less nutritious and less healthy. Maybe there's a downside. We might accidentally create super weeds that could take over the whole environment. So imagine our new perfect apple. It starts spreading everywhere and it starts killing the natural apples and the other types of trees. And it's just growing everywhere out of control and we can't contain it. This would be quite bad. There are plenty of benefits though, right? Which is why somebody out there is doing this genetic modification. We could increase our ability to deal with pests and disease. So instead of having the apples eaten by worms, maybe these apples, the worms don't like them and they no longer eat them. I don't know about you, but I don't want to bite into an apple that might have a worm in it. Maybe it can't get the fungus and other viruses, diseases that are out there because it's resistant because it has special genes in it that are resistant. Maybe it's better at dealing with drought, so now I can put my apple crop in a desert and it'll even still grow. That's very um, extreme as an example, but you know, anything's possible. And in general, because I'm able to grow more of these types of foods and types of animals, I'm going to overall have more food supply for a growing population that is now way over 7 billion. So we are going to be talking about not only genetically modified foods but other examples and talking about the pros and the cons you're going to have to decide and make your own opinion as citizens is this stuff good that we're doing is it right let's keep going we're also doing more products and uses of genetic engineering but specifically for humans and the diseases humans get this started with the project called the human genome and this project was all about an international endeavor to really map out the entire human genetic information. What does that mean? So they took a couple people to represent the average person and they wanted to know every single letter, A, T, C, and G, which was billions of letters in the human. And once they got the approximate average, since we are about 99% or more in common, no matter if we're from Africa or Asia or our backgrounds, we are mostly the same as humans. And using that information, now our current research and future research is using that code that we now know as codons that make proteins from that DNA. What proteins do those letters code for? And what are the jobs or functions of each of those proteins? And once we know about what they're supposed to do, we might learn what happens if there's a disease that might make one of those genes missing. What if a certain section of A's, T's, C's, and G's is missing? What if they accidentally have a typo or a mutation? So we're kind of manipulating and playing with that. All right, does it cause a disease? Maybe it might even cause a benefit. So 
now we might think about this as kind of controversial. We're now manipulating DNA of humans and trying to figure it out, but it could be useful for medical research. So here are some more examples of the specific ways we're using that information. The first is called gene therapy. Okay, this is fixing or adding mutated DNA or proteins. This is super tough and very controversial. So maybe that person who's diabetic, maybe in the far future we can't do it now, the goal would be to take the defective insulin protein and add a normal insulin protein more permanently. Or maybe we would fix more permanently the normal DNA so it would make the correct insulin protein automatically. Well, the the problem is that DNA is messed up in all of the person's cells, so fixing the DNA throughout their body is really tough. But this would be great because we could cure, cure some genetic diseases, we might be able to replace defective or missing genes, it would be wonderful, but we still don't fully know how to do this. And not everybody agrees that we should, because yes, it would be great if we used it for diseases, but what if we used it for things that were just... Um, you don't like the way you have your eye color and you want to permanently change your eye color. Is that something that's worthwhile? Maybe for some, but maybe not for all. We can also do genetic screening. This is something that's already done. This is being able to detect if you have the genetic disease that would be being screened. So for instance, we can screen for some cancer-causing genes. But is that something that we should know? Maybe you want to know if you have it because you might be able to pass it on to your offspring. But is it something you really want to know? Is it something that you would want your um, medical insurance to know? It might make that more expensive. So because this is also controversial, now we have to talk about the ethics. Ethics is what is right or safe, right versus wrong. So what is ethics? You have to decide what is ethical. I can't decide for you, but it's you thinking about is something morally right or wrong. Look, we've used this genetic engineering to put a ear, a human ear, and grow it on a mouse. But this human ear is used to patch up somebody who accidentally had their ear blown off during a explosion in a war. So maybe this is gross, but maybe it's great that we're helping somebody out. That's up for you to decide. But the consequences of our actions are not always clear. All right, are we going to be doing this for humans? So we're going to kind of summarize some major controversies, and you're going to have to come up with your own opinions. I can't come up with them for you. So our first major ethical issue with biotechnology is maybe we're going to create harmful organisms, and maybe they're going to kind of attack society and we'll be worried about it. But maybe we're going to help make medical solutions. So remember the Ebola outbreak? Well, that was scary, but that was a natural outbreak. Wouldn't it be horrible if it was something that we accidentally produced, right? That would be horrible. But we have so many great things we're possibly able to make. So it's a really tough decision. Other issues. Well, we have this new ability to diagnose genetic diseases even before birth. Now, what if you know your baby might have cancer later on in life, or maybe it's going to have tough time walking throughout its life? This might make someone, depending on their culture or religion, decide whether or not to keep the baby. That is something everybody has different opinions on, and it's very tough. And so that's one thing. If it's a really, really intense issue, or maybe the baby isn't going to live past two years old, but what if it's just the person doesn't like the way the baby's going to look? Can they? Should they be able to do something about it? And that's related to this next one. Should we be able to modify or change the genes in humans? There's been a lot of movies out there that show that maybe in the future we're going to be able to decide what we want our babies to look like. I mean, maybe I want my baby to have purple hair. Maybe I want it to be tall. Maybe I never want it to have heart disease. So this could be good, but it could be something that makes us uncomfortable. What if it's really expensive and it's not 
fair. So a lot of those other things that we talked about, genetic and screening, the gene therapy, they're really expensive. So maybe not everybody's going to be able to do them. Only the rich people. Is that going to be fair? That's going to make a bigger divide between the rich and the poor really controversial. A lot of these things are expensive. And last but not least, we've talked about some of these things potentially being dangerous. Well, what if these potentially dangerous things were being used by the military and they were being used for not good reasons to hurt people? This would be really horrible. So we can take our fears and we can try to make solutions, but we all have to make our own opinion. And we're going to use our opinions in class to have some discussions. Great job, guys. You did it.